watch him go out and pitch his game, and, and he'll be fine. Well, I mean, that's what the skipper wants, but obviously everybody else wants to talk about that no-hitter from five days ago. But the one thing about Verlander, he has turned the page on the no-hitter. I watched him a couple of days preparing for this start after the no-hitter, and he had that scowl on his face like he was getting ready for this start against the Kansas City Royals. And the start against the Royals is about ready to get going here. Chris Getz will lead it off on a 78 degree night here at the ballpark. A little bit cloudy and overcast. The lights are turned on. Humid as well. And we are ready for baseball as Getz digs in. Then Melky Cabrera. Then Alex Gordon. Justin Verlander ready to go to work. And here we go. Tonight's first pitch of the ball game. A little bit outside on Getz who comes in batting 220. No homers this year. He's knocked in 10. Here is Verlander's 1 0 pitch. And it's on the outside corner. A strike with a fastball. 1 1. Verlander in the month of May has been outstanding. Of course, the no hitter really helped his numbers in May. 19 and 8 overall in his career. And it's popped up foul back out of play. He typically has had slow starts this year not maybe as slow as past years but certainly his Mays have been a whole lot better. ERA in the month of May 2.68. And gets behind in the count one and two. Lifted in the air to center field and Austin Jackson measuring it one gone. One of the things that Verlander was able to do uh, five days ago. Along with throwing the no hitter is he heeded the advice of the pitching coach uh, Rick Knapp and the bullpen coach Jeff Jones. Uh, he was 92 93 in the first couple of innings and then he's throttled up to about 95 and about the middle innings. He was throwing 100 before the game was over and they believe that is the right recipe for Verlander to have success uh, in the big leagues in the game. Sure worked on Saturday. That's for sure. Wave and a miss by Melky Cabrera. He has much more movement when he's in that 92 to 93 mile per hour range and he's much more efficient at throwing strikes although when he threw that no hitter he was throwing his 100 mile per hour fastballs with command which is really kind of shocking when you think about it to be able to throw with that velocity and throw with that type of command you just don't see that very often he was unbelievable. The other thing he was able to do which I guess is intertwined with your point is to kind of calm himself down he said he felt calm the entire day. The 0 2 outside and I don't really want to speak for Verlander but if you watch his demeanor uh, after throwing that no hitter he was so cool and calm and collected and to me I'm thinking he's thinking to himself you know what this is not the last one I'm going to throw seemed like that that's the type of attitude he seemed to possess that day that's hit the third right at Brandon in easy throw across the diamond Cabrera is out two gone. Good start tonight for Verlander two up two away and that'll bring up Alex Gordon. Well, the Royals came in a half game up on the Tigers in the standings. This is a Kansas City team that has hung in there with Cleveland at the top of the Central Division in the early going. In fact they took two out of three from the Tigers earlier this year in this ballpark. Opening weekend here. And part of the reason they played so well in the month of April was this guy right here, Gordon, really coming on in the early part of this season. Yeah, Gordon in the offseason worked with the hitting instructor, Kevin Seitzer, if we get a look at the standings in the central. Yeah, they worked about three to four times a week in the offseason, and that's one of the reasons he came in to this season with a really good mindset. He's always had ability to play. This Royals team can hit. Make no mistake about it. It's really no fluke. They get lots of base hits. Waving a miss. He was out in front. One and two. Gordon just finished up a series, however, in New York in which he slowed down a bit. He was one for ten. Alex Avila again behind the plate in this one. And he takes strike three. Got him in the outside corner. Gordon didn't like it. And Larry Vanover says, see you later. First strikeout of the night for Justin Verlander.
The bottom of the first inning here at Comerica Park. Game one of the series against the Royals. Tigers starting lineup presented by Big Boy. It's Jackson, Sizemore, and Bosch at the top. Cabrera is at first base. Martinez, the DH, he has been red hot. Kelly, Peralta, Avila, and Inge round out Jim, La Jim Leland's lineup here tonight. The Bernstein advantage brings you the scouting report on Luke Hochaber. Get the Bernstein advantage. We go to bat for you. Well, was that Grinky being traded to the Milwaukee Brewers in the offseason? It was Luke that got the opening day start for the Kansas City Royals. He has all four pitches, fastball, curve, slider, and a changeup. In Kansas City, they are waiting for Luke to take that next step and become a constant winner in the major leagues. He's got the kind of stuff to do so. He's a big boy. He stands 6'5", 220 out of Denver, Colorado. Former number one pick out of Tennessee. Driven to the air toward left center field. Hit well. Gordon back looks up, and that ball is gone. Jackson with a leadoff home run and the Tigers take the lead. We see you young boy. Way to jump start the party. Third of the year for Austin. Austin does not hit for a lot of power but he got a fastball down. Took a really good path to the ball and he has been really aggressive. Uh, with great hand speed the last two weeks. Man, oh man, the turnaround for Jackson has just been stunning, I guess, in some ways, but in other ways, you kind of expected it. Well, no question about that. At least Jim expected it. And Jackson knew he would turn the corner. April is way in the rearview mirror right now. Seven game hitting streak now for Jackson. His home run makes it 1 nothing Detroit. And really, no coincidence that the, the other pieces of the offense have kind of perked up uh, with the energy that Jackson has displayed uh, lately. Sizemore hits it hard and through a base hit right by the shortstop Escobar. These boys are picking up right where they left off in Toronto and Minnesota. Let's take a look at the Kansas City Royals defensively. It's presented by Tim Hortons. You got Gordon Cabrera, Frank Corn in the outfield. Avilas Escobar gets uh, the rookie phenom, Eric Hosmer. He's over at first base. Matt Trainer, and he's behind the plate, and Pochaper is on the ditch. Well, the Tigers hit 284 on the last road trip. They hit over 300 in the two game series against Minnesota. And as Rod mentioned, they are picking up right where they left off. There's a drive to right. It is hooking and foul. Oh, my goodness, bro. Oh. How about that one? Bosh just yanked it foul. I don't know how uh, Hoche was holding that thing this first inning, but boy, he better try a different grip. Jackson a home run to lead it off. Sizemore a single and now Bosch hitting here with nobody out. Oh and two on Brennan. For Bosch the average at 298. Three hits on the road trip to all three of them came in that series against the Minnesota Twins. Sizemore edging off the bag and draws a throw. Scott has stolen once this year. Hochaber, meanwhile, coming off a pretty good start, gave up one run in seven innings in a no decision against Oakland. Here's the 0 2. Lifted in the air to center. Cabrera coming on, and it'll be Gordon in front of him to make the play. Sizemore going to have to hurry, and he just got back. One gone. He's going to bring up Cabrera. Gabby had a slow road trip, but the day off yesterday seemingly has re-energized Cabrera. He's been bothered by a sore back. His leg has been hurting a bit. But yet through it all, he continues to go out there. It's also nice when your team can win five games in a row when you're a little banged up. It kind of shows the balance that the Tigers have in their offense. He also departed that final game in Minnesota two days ago early when he was ejected from the game for arguing balls and strikes. 
Coach Haver really has no answer for Cabrera. Well, at least not yet. He is 10 for 20. He has trotted around the base pass a couple of times against Luke. Is 500 good? That's really good. There's a ground ball to third. Avila stays with it, throws to second one, and he'll get the double play. So that ends the inning of 5 4 3, but the inning started with a bang. Austin Jackson hits his third of the year. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank. Strength and stability since 1849. Dodge, visit Dodge.com or see your local dealer today. And by Arby's, stop by and try the Market Fresh Grilled Chicken and Pecan Salad Sandwich. Well, the rain has stayed away. That's good. And it's a cloudy and humid night here at the ballpark. 78 our game time temp. The Austin Jackson home run has given the Tigers an early lead. And so Verlander goes back to the hill facing Butler, Francoeur, and Hosmer. And Butler, outstanding young hitter. He's been in the big leagues for quite a few years now, but you know, he is a tremendous young talent. And his number's not all that bad against Verlander in his career. 298 overall this year with three home runs, over 400 against Verlander. And they back him out of there with the ball inside. In fact, Butler hits 406 to be exact against JV. Yeah, real good balance. Not many. You do the kind of damage that Butler has been able to do against Verlander. Just a handful. Good pitch that just missed the outer edge at 95 miles an hour, 2 0. Butler had a four hit game last night against the Yankees. Here's the 2 0 pitch. Missed it inside, 3 0. Butler batting in the cleanup slot is a 342 career hitter against the Tigers, and that's a pretty good sampling there, 67 games. He was swinging 3 0. Three and one. This back to our conversation we had a couple of days ago. Some guys are comfortable doing it. Some guys aren't. I haven't seen Billy do it too often, though. He must have just felt that Verlander was going to give him a cookie, a fastball right down the middle, and he didn't really look comfortable swinging three and zero. Breaking ball drops in, so he throws him a three-one breaking ball, three and two. Well, Verlander has the kind of stuff, and he also has the kind of confidence that he can throw. Uh, any of his four pitches in any situation. And he rolled that one foul at home plate. Butler and then Frank Kuhr and Hosmer here in the second. Tigers ahead 1 0. The second and third place teams in the Central Division getting together in this three game series. 
Yeah, this Kansas City Royals team coming off a series win in New York. The first series the Yankees have lost at home this year. And again the 3 2 inside he walked him. The lead off walk to Butler here in the second. Time now for the Farmers Insurance report card. The Royals coming off that series win against the Yanks. First time since August, get this, of 1999 that the Royals won a series in the Bronx. You talk about a long time. Of course, the Royals and Yankees used to get together just about every year in the playoffs in the 70s and 80s. There's a ball outside to Jeff Francoeur. Francoeur is off to a great start to, with his new club. Having spent some time in Atlanta, New York, and Texas, he appears to have found a home, and he's swinging the bat the way that he swung the bat when he was a rookie in Atlanta. He drives this one toward right field. On the move is Bosch. He'll get there. One gone. Butler retreats. And that'll bring us to our first look at Eric Hosmer, the highly touted rookie for the Royals. Just one of several prospects that uh, the Royals have down on the farm that are very highly regarded. Hosmer, though, kind of separated himself this year. He kind of forced his way to the big leagues this year. Tremendous numbers at AAA. On base percentage, over 500. And he's a big kid. He skies this one in the air toward left center field. Hit pretty well. Kelly is on the move. He'll get it in front of the warning track. Butler tagging up. And he'll get the second standing up. Hosmer is out of there. Two gone. Kelly playing in left field tonight, as you may have heard before the game. Maglio placed on the DL. Andy Dirks called up from Toledo. He's scheduled to be with the team at some point tonight. Jim Leland saying that uh, he'll play Dirks. He's up here to play, so we'll see how the rotation happens to uh, come about in the next few days. Here's Mike Avilas. Want to know on Avilas? Well, Jim and his staff they they fell in love with Andy Dirks in spring training. And as a matter of fact, uh, he was up uh, with the major league club until the final days of spring. He got a lot of at bats, a lot of looks in spring. The 1 0. The vendor is in for a strike. If you're a young guy, that's really all you can ask for is just the opportunity to play in front of the big league guys. Open up the eyes of the manager. And we've seen several guys do it, and several of those guys have. Uh, somehow found their way to the big leagues. The Velas waves and misses. One and two on Mike Avilas, who is also having himself a solid start to this year. 26 RBIs. When they came here uh, earlier this year, he didn't get off the bench. Uh, Betamine started every single game at third base in that series against Detroit. And to put into perspective how good of a season Avilas has had so far, he has as many RBIs as Miguel Cabrera. Five homers as well. Butler at second base with two outs, tying run. We're in the second. And Avila blocks that one. So Avila behind the plate, Avilas at the plate. Three and two. Former Tiger Matt Trainer waiting on deck if Avilas reaches. Fly ball left field. Don Kelly is right there, and that is that. Three fly ball outs after the leadoff walk. Royals strand a man.
Austin Jackson's solo home run has given the Tigers a one nothing lead. Victor Martinez leads off the second where he left off in Minnesota with a base hit. Boy oh boy is he sizzling hot right now. He was six of eight in the series against the Twins and welcome back home a base hit. It's a 12 game hitting streak. Well, the Tigers already have three hits on Hochaver and one of the things that they're doing against Hochaver in this ball game tonight is he's trying to get ahead with that first pitch strike and they're not letting it go by. Uh, they've been very aggressive first pitch swinging here in this ball game. Here's Don Kelly playing in left tonight. Donnie saw some limited time on the road trip was three for six. Kelly batting 263. He'll be heading home on the next road trip going into Pittsburgh which is where Donnie Kelly's from. The 0 1. One ball and one strike. Hey man the skipper. Going back to the house. You know, Skipper still lives in Pittsburgh in the uh, Pittsburgh area in the offseason. Skipper, like most of us, spent last night watching the Red Wings. The 1 1. Trainer can't find it, now he does. And then Victor knew he wasn't going anywhere. Speed not really a big part of uh, Victor's game. Two and one on Don Kelly. Bouncing ball right side it's through. Out of the reach of Osmer. Martinez hits the bag at second he'll go to third and he's in there. Outstanding base running by Victor. Even though still not 100%. Uh, because of the right growing which landed him on the disabled list. But after a solid single off the bat of Kelly. Victor did not even look over to Gene Lamont to see whether Gene wanted him to come to third or not. He knew he was going to be able to get there without the help of Lamont. It's good to see Victor uh, somewhat running pain free. Yeah, he pushed it a little bit there. And so the Tigers have another great opportunity here. Runners at first and third nobody out. Here's another guy that's been hot. Johnny Peralta had 10 hits on the road trip. His average creeping up toward 300. The biggest hit was that big fly. Pinch hit variety. A couple of days ago. In Minnesota. That was the first pinch hit. Home run in his career. Strike one on Peralta. That home run by Johnny was his fourth of the year and he now has 20 RBIs this season. Cabrera Martinez Peralta and Avila are all over the 20 mark and runs driven in so far. Swing and a miss so and two on Peralta. It's still early but this 2007 team starting to shape up. The 2011 team is starting to shape up like that 07 team where. And Granderson and Polanco and Sheffield and Monroe and Timms and Pudge and Mags, you name it. They all had really good seasons driving in lots of runs. Well, the names are different, but the results are starting to look very, very similar. That 07 team was really fun to watch offensively. And this is a Tigers team that on the recent road trip showed they might be uh, they might be in that team's class. Double digit hits in many of those games. And the 0 2. Swing and a miss. Peralta goes down and Hochaver records his first strikeout. I think I heard someone say that the five game winning streak they had on this current a road trip was the first time they had done that since 07. And if I think back to that 07 trip team, it had to be when they rolled through Chicago and, and Milwaukee because they were on fire. In interleague play that year on that road trip. Here is Alex Avila. Well, that series in Chicago certainly comes to mind. That might have been the fun, most fun I've had in a road series in a long, long time. Oh, it was a party and it was on every day. There were so many Tigers fans just milling around outside in Wrigleyville. Here's Avila with one out. 
Alex has been outstanding in these situations all season long. And very seldom has there been a runner on third base and he not gotten him in. And via the sacrifice fly. Avila with 23 RBIs. He trails Cabrera for the team lead. Cabrera 26. Wave and a miss 1 1. I was asking Alex today about the collision he had at home plate with Ben Revere, a speedy outfielder of the Minnesota Twins, and he said uh, he's been hit harder. And he also said that he knew that Revere wasn't that big, and that's one of the reasons why. He was blocking the plate the way that he was blocking the plate the way that that game was going seesawing back and forth. So it was say Adam Dunn coming at you. He would have gotten out of the way. And I don't I can't say I would have blamed him either. for me either. Hochaver gave up two hits in the first two more hits here in the second. Reading a stat on Hochaper that 60% of his hits allowed this year have been for extra bases. Wow. 60%. Those are fastballs that are up in the strike zone. And a lot of friendly hitter counts for the opposition. Bouncing ball hit to the right side. Getz will spin to second one, and that's all they're going to get. Scoring from third is Victor Martinez, and it's 2 0 Detroit. So Avila again gets the run in. Real aggressive slide by Don Kelly. Uh, Escobar wasn't going to turn it anyway because the ball was not hit sharp enough for them to turn two, but a really nice aggressive slide by DK. That'll bring up Brandon Inge. Inge had the game winning triple two days ago in that final game against the Minnesota Twins, a game that was going back and forth. The Tigers let a couple of leads get away. He was also on third base when Austin Jackson laid down a perfectly placed squeeze bunt. Play ran to perfection by Jim Leland and his team. Bouncing ball right back to the mound. Oh, Chaver takes care of it himself. Tigers get another run to go up 2 0. You're watching Tigers Baseball on Fox Sports Detroit, presented by Bell Tire. And we were just reminiscing a little bit about about Justin Verlander's first no hitter. You've been a season ticket holder for a while now. You were actually there for that game. What was it like watching that as a fan? I've been a season ticket holder since 2005. I had seen Justin pitch a number of times. He works so quickly that you don't always realize what's going on. But at the end of the sixth inning, we noticed all the zeros on the board and got really, really excited. When you're watching the game on Saturday in Toronto, were you thinking, wow, is this really going to happen again? I mean, were you surprised to see him do it again? We were out running errands and didn't even turn on the game till the sixth inning. We saw him break away to commercial, and once again, all those zeros on the board, I said, we can't go anywhere. We have to watch this. 
All right, thanks so much, Brian. Brian Mario, we'll send it back up to you. All right, Shannon, thank you. Well, the Verlander no hitters, two of them now, and he's off to another nice start here tonight. He gave up a walk to Butler in the second, but has retired everybody else. Matt Trainer will lead it off. Whether you're watching on TV or whether you're there in person, nothing like a no hitter for pure drama and excitement. Trainer looks at strike one to kick things off here in the third. Escobar and then gets to follow him. 224 this year for Trainer, who caught mostly for the Texas Rangers last year. It's back out of play on two. Tiger fans may remember Matt Trainer was a Tiger very, very briefly. A couple of years back in 2009, he was injured early in the season and never played the rest of the year. Got him. Strike three. Time for a game break now. We go back to the studio. Here's Mickey York. All right, Mickey, thank you. Here the Tigers are ahead 2 0. Escobar stands in and he looks at a strike. I watched a lot of the uh, Cleveland Indians game yesterday against the Tampa Bay Rays. Cleveland dropped the final two games of that series. Chu and Santana, the young catcher, they're hitting about 220 apiece. But yet, they're still winning a lot of games. Yeah, they've lost their last two, yet they hold on to their lead of three and a half in the Central. Verlander is ahead of the count here on Alcides Escobar. And that's fouled off. 0 2 the count stays. And meanwhile, it looks like Verlander has brought that wicked stuff with him here once again tonight, as he does just about every fifth day. He has been up to 97 with his fastball. The curveball buckles the knees of the right handed hitters. And he's thrown a couple of really good change ups as well. Here's the 0 2. While Escobar is everything they expected defensively, Alcides really not having a very good year with the bat hitting 226. And the Royals have gone through some shortstops over the past decade. Here's the 1 2. Right off the end of the bat to stay alive. But this kid can play some short with the best of them. Good arm, good range, good speed. Acquired in the deal for Zach Greinke with the Milwaukee Brewers. And again the one two breaking ball in the air center field. Jackson. Calls off Bosch. Two outs. By the way, you can vote for your Tigers McDonald's player of the game presented by the Big Mac tonight using your cell phone. Text Tigers followed by a space. The player's uniform number to 37338. Or you can vote online at FoxSportsDetroit.com. We'll have the final results on Tigers Live after we are done here. Chris gets up there with two outs. Strike one on Getz. Hit one on a line to center field his first time up both for one for gets. Breaking ball missing away one ball and one strike. The only base runner so far against Verlander the leadoff walk to Billy Butler back in the second. Chopped foul first base side. One and two on Getz, who last year played in just 72 games, hampered by injuries, had an oblique strain. And you know his story by now, former player at Gross Point South, won a state championship. Here's the one-two. He reaches out, rolls it back to Verlander. 
easy one two three inning for Justin no runs no hits nobody left let's go to the bottom of the third. Here we go. Johnny Vandermeer pitched consecutive no hitters in 1938 against which two teams? Can you name the two teams that he no hit in consecutive starts? Nobody else has done that. No hitters in consecutive starts. Vandermeer, the only one back in 38. Jackson leading it off. Austin back in the first hit his third career leadoff home run. It traveled better than 400 feet. Hey, Austin should get himself a really good fastball here. Two balls, no strikes. And he has been putting the ball in play with regularity. 3 0. Hochaver giving up one in the first, one in the second. The 3 0 pitch. He's taking ball four, and the leadoff man is on for the third straight frame. Hochaver has his first walk of the game. That Yost, the skipper of the Kansas City Royals, his team off to a nice start this year. They are still kind of juggling between trying to win games and the building for the future. They're kind of like right in between. They're playing with a lot of energy, that much is for sure. And they kind of started that back in the middle of February when they got to spring training. Yost said, We're going to run the bases more aggressively. We're going to go first and third. We're going to steal some bases. And we're going to compete in the central. And that's exactly what they have done up until this point. And it was this time last year that the club dismissed manager Trey Hillman. Here's the 1 0, and it's lined foul back out of play. Yeah, Dayton Moore, their current general manager, very familiar with Ned Yost. Uh, Yost worked for about 10 years under Bobby Cox in Atlanta. As a bullpen coach, later third base coach, Dayton Moore was there at the same time as well. Ironically, Zach Frankie beat Cleveland that night, and they uh, told Trey Hillman that he was going to be dismissed. And Ned Yost then took over. And when you have one eye on the future, if you're Ned Yost, you have to be excited. You've seen what Eric Hosmer can do at this level, and there is plenty more talent coming, both position players and pitching. Swing and a miss by Sizemore. Well, one of the things the Royals have been able to do, they've been able to stockpile a lot of very high draft choices because they finish toward the bottom every single year, which means they get a really good pick. And they haven't shied away from those guys. They've signed them. Yeah, that's the key. Another throw, and he got back in standing up. They gave the youngster on first base six million dollars just a couple of years ago out of high school. 
And so they're starting to spend some money. Mike Moustakis, their other highly touted prospect, was actually ahead of Hosmer, but Hosmer separated himself with a big year this year down in the minor leagues. He had talked to a good buddy of mine, and he said Moustakis is struggling right now. Avilas is playing some decent third base. Betamid also chipping in, driving in some runs. No need to rush Moustakis right now. Two and two on Sizemore. Popped him up. Back a second. Chris gets under it. Hey fans, be at Comerica Park Sunday when the Tigers host the Royals at 105. It's Sunday Kids Day with all youngsters receiving a Maglio Ordonez mini bat. For tickets, call 866-66-TIGER or log on to Tigers.com. That'll bring up Brendan Bosch. One of the reasons why Jackson is still standing over at first base is the fact that a Hochaver does not take a whole lot of time getting the ball out of his hand into the catcher's glove. Therefore, Austin has not been able to get a good jump yet. Pitch out. Jackson heads back to the bag. Bosch a fly ball to center field in his first at bat, 0 for 1. A good time to put a hit and run on if you want to do something like that if you're Jim and put a runner in motion. The 1 0 pitch is a strike right at the knees, 1 and 1 on Bosch. Hochaver, number one overall pick out of Tennessee. In fact, the first ever number one overall pick from that baseball program. Runner goes. Here comes the throw from Trainer. It's on the mark, not in time. Good strong throw, but the tag was late by Escobar. Great jump by Austin Jackson, and he needed to get a great jump. The trainer is known more for his defensive skills and offense. He gets off a really good throw to the bag, but Jackson with a great jump, uh, able to slide in there successfully with that right foot leading to the bag first. Jackson has his fifth stolen base. Nice look there. The Panasonic Fox Mo giving you that slow motion look. That's rip foul. Two and two on Bosch. Jackson's had a big night already. He's homered. He's walked. He has stolen a base. And Bosch trying to cash him in. Tigers getting one in each of the first two innings. Brennan Bosch. And Bosch stays alive. O'Chaver pitched against the Tigers back on April the 10th. It was a 9 to 5 victory. He went seven, giving up five hits, three earned runs. Struck out six in that game. Tigers got to him early though in this one with a couple of runs, and maybe more. Again, the 2 2. Driven to right field, base hit. Jackson coming to third. They're going to send him home. Fran Coors throw, cut off, relay. He's out at home plate. Larry Vanover called him out. Has been known as having a gun out there and running an outstanding accurate arm. His throw is cut off. Well, to give you an idea of just how strong his arm is, no one has thrown out more base runners uh, than Fran Coors since the beginning of the 05 season. That is now 86, and a very nice job of blocking home plate here by Matt Trainer. And Jackson able actually beat the throw there, but look at the leg right there. It blocks Jackson from getting to the plate, 
and therefore Larry Vanover right there to make the out call. So the Royals uh, avoid one there. I thought for sure after Hosmer the first baseman cut this ball off that Jackson was going to be safe but it's a very nice job of blocking home plate by trainer. Nine three two on that put out. Oh and one on Cabrera and he fouls one away Owen oh two. Cabrera headed into a double play his first time up. I thought the same thing immediately when that ball was caught at first base by Hosmer. No chance of getting it. But Trainer with an outstanding effort. And there was no argument. Jim Leland got to about the second step and realized, no, nope, he was probably out. Owen two. In the air to right field. Rancour is there, and that is that. Tigers threaten, do not score. They leave a man. Three in the books, two nothing. Baseball's most bitter rivals. Coverage begins with a special time of 7 p.m. on your local Fox station. Couple more looks. Uh, Hosmer cut the ball off at first base. Trainer blocking the plate, and then the tag applied right there before the left hand of Jackson's able to get on top of home plate. Even with the block of home plate, it looked like Jackson made that extremely close. A bang bang play. Out was the call by Larry Vanover. And as we go to the fourth inning, Tigers and Justin Verlander still leading 2 0 as Melky Cabrera leads it off. It'll be Cabrera, Gordon, and Butler. 2 3 and 4 in the KC lineup. First pitch high, 1 0. A couple of the veteran outfielders in Cabrera and Francoeur that they brought over to buy them some time while the young kids kind of got ready to play in the big leagues have had some really nice starts in their Kansas City career. They're both playing some really good baseball. 24 RBIs for Cabrera with five home runs. Melky went back to the Bronx in the last the series they played over the last few days in New York for the first time since he was traded away. Let's roll to second base. Routine there for Sizemore. Melky Cabrera is 0 for 2. One out. Let's bring up Alex Gordon. Gordon, a strikeout victim in the first. He took it looking. One of the reasons he got up to such a terrific start this year was a 19 game hitting streak in the month of April and that is 
Right now the longest hitting streak this year in the American League. And Jacoby Ellsbury also with a 19 gamer. Ned Yost has also shown a tremendous amount of confidence in Gordon who spent some of the time uh, last year in the minor leagues but he's been in that number three spot all season long and and when you know where you're going to hit confidence comes when you've got talent. We're talking about this the last time we saw Kansas City ride but I think it, it just got to the point where it was time to see if this kid could do it at this level. Yeah, they found him a new position they put him in the outfield he's comfortable in left field. Good athlete he's a good player. Outside two and one. I'm Gordon. I know Rusty Koontz uh, who works with the outfielders in the. Kansas City organization. And he said for the first time last year he saw Gordon smile in the big leagues. High fly ball right field it's pretty good but playable. Bosch under it two gone. Here's that AT&T trivia question again. We're talking about no hitters and consecutive no hitters. Johnny Vandermeer did it in 1938 against which two teams did he throw the consecutive no hitters. Well the first one against the Boston Braves and then on June 15th against the Brooklyn Dodgers <laughs> four days later at three days rest. Yeah how about that. Pretty amazing. Here's Billy Butler. Royals tonight have had only a walk to Butler their only base runner that was back in the second. Here's the 1 0. Bouncing ball to short. Here comes Peralta. And it's another 1 2 3 inning for Justin Verlander. He's dialed in again tonight. And by a leave all day strong all day long. Back here in the Motor City. In the shadow of the Fox Theater two nothing in favor of the Detroit Tigers in this one as we go now to the bottom of the fourth. The red hot Victor Martinez leads it off. And he takes strike one from Luke Hochaber. It'll be Martinez Kelly and Peralta. Tigers have gotten the leadoff man on in the first three consecutive frames. Here's the 0 1 pitch. One ball and one strike. Martinez extended his hitting streak to 12 straight very quickly with a leadoff single in the second. He had 13 hits on that last road trip. 13 hits. He played six games. Ball outside. Two and one on Victor. Two.
two homers, 13 RBIs in that stretch as well. Here's the 2 1. Martinez rounding into shape. The uh, hitter that the Tigers thought he would be is batting 341 now, and it wasn't too long ago that he was in the 260 range. 3 1 pitch is on the ground to first base. Looks like they'll get him this time. Hosmer will take it himself. One gone in the fourth. We'll bring up Don Kelly. Kelly is single back in the second. His average up to 282. If you missed the announcement earlier today, Maglio Ordonez was placed on the disabled list. He talked to Kevin Rand, the head athletic trainer, yesterday. He said his ankle felt weak. He couldn't push off at the plate. And so the Tigers decided to put him on the DL, and they have called up Andy Dirks to take his spot. They gave Dirks a good number. What did they give him? Number 12. Really? Yeah. Good number. Who else wore number 12? Jim Price did. I know that. Yeah, there's someone else I think wore number 12. <laughs> Let me think on this. One. Oh, you. That's right. I thought you knew. <laughs> I thought you knew. Here's the one-two pitch. I didn't get it dirty though. <laughs> you never had to wash your uniform. <laughs> I wasn't here long enough. <laughs> two and two on Kelly. And a bouncing ball foul right by Tom Brookins. Talking about Dirks uh, earlier in the broadcast uh, in spring training he was the talk of the camp. It wasn't Cabby it wasn't JV it wasn't Victor Martinez it was Andy Dirks Jim Leland fell in love with him early. That's the first base Hosmer backs up. Oche recovered and Jim stayed in love with him until he sent him down to the minor leagues and those of us uh, that follow this club and that have followed the club since 2006 uh, there are a few rookies that have caught Jim's eye in spring training. And we've seen those rookies come to the big leagues during the course of the regular season. That's what you want to accomplish in spring training as a manager. You want to stay right around 500 as a team. You want to get all your regular position players the necessary at bats they need to be ready for the regular season. And you want to take a look at some of the babies. Now Jim was able to do all that in spring training this year. Here is Peralta. He skies one toward right field slicing. And it's a souvenir. Peralta had four consecutive games in Toronto where he had two hits apiece. And then he pinch hit in Minnesota and hit a home run. It was a big fly. Game changer. Hanging breaking ball is line foul. And Peralta has given a lot of credit to the hitting coach Lloyd McClendon for his ability now to uh, drive the ball to left center field and also right center field when they got uh, Peralta last year he was a dead pull hitter hooked a lot of balls down the third baseline and foul. So what you do is you just kind of change your approach and you get a little bit more comfortable and confident in taking proper hand direction which he has done and the results are pretty good 293 as we speak. And for the batting average for Johnny. And again, the 0 2. Johnny had a horrible spring, and a lot of people were concerned. I don't even think he hit 100. And people thought that it was a bad deal for the Tigers to bring him in, but he was working on something. That's why sometimes spring training can be so deceptive, especially with veteran guys. He knew he was going to be the starting shortstop. He just kind of stayed with the plan they had, and results are good. So, fill the count three and two on Peralta, who struggled mightily, as you mentioned. Uh, his average was in the 100s most of spring training, just barely around two. Uh, but it didn't matter. The luxury of being a veteran, knowing you've got your job at the start of the year. When the light goes on, then you perform. 3 2 pitches, hammered in the air toward left field and hit well. Gordon going back to the wall. He leaps. Kiss it goodbye. It's gone. Well, he strikes again.
That's his fifth home run. Take a look at the path here. The hands lead with the bat knob, and that gets the bat through the strike zone in a very quick fashion, and not a play to be made for Gord in the outfield. <laughs> JV, I'll take it. He says he is something in me. Three to nothing ball game. Here's Alex Avila. 374 feet on that Peralta home run, the estimated distance. Avila picked up an RBI with a ground ball back in the second. 24 RBIs for Alex. High in the air toward left on the move. Gordon still coming. Not going to be able to get there. 0 oh 2. Johnny Peralta's made it 3 0. Two out solo shot off Hochaver. Hochaver now has allowed 11 home runs this year. I beg your pardon, two today makes it 12 home runs, not 11. Forgot about Jackson's. Ties with Colby Lewis of Texas for the most home runs given up in the AL. A little bit outside, one and two. Three runs, six hits for the Tigers. The Royals have had only one base runner, and that was a walk. Billy Butler done off the second. Let's follow away. When Ho Chaver pitched at Tennessee, he was a finalist for the Golden Spikes in 2005. That was the award that was won by his current teammate, Alex Gordon. Two balls, two strikes. Golden spikes given out annually to the top college baseball player. Two and two. Ochaver's two two pitch. Swing and a miss. Off speed. Avila was out in front, and that is that. Second strikeout for Ochaver. However, the Tigers do more damage. Peralta hits one out. Three to nothing.
back. Well, you might have noticed today is Friday the 13th, and with that, you have to talk about baseball superstitions. And I have a great family here, and we were just talking about this. You yourself have a pretty funky superstition. Always sit in the same seat because I caught my ball with Magli Ordonez off his bat with my glove. I always sit in this seat. And I understand your better half has to be right here with you. Is that why? She's always next to me, and she has a tradition also. Yes, I wear my Tiger earrings to every single game. We've been coming to Tiger games since before we were married. Now, you know, we're talking about superstitions. Obviously, a lot of the baseball players do. On Saturday, you saw Avila. He didn't go to the bathroom when he really had to. And I, Rod and Mario, I'm wondering, for you guys, do you have any baseball superstitions? Oh, well, yes, Shannon. I like to wear my Tiger earrings for every game as well. But I think <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> it's no, actually... You, Rod, were not afraid to use that term on the last uh, game. You know, the the NH term. I said it. You said it. I said it. And it didn't matter. Did not matter. Here is Jeff Francoeur. A lot of people were screaming at me, too. But it didn't affect anything. That's in the air. Center field, and Austin Jackson is under it. One gone. Ten straight retired now by Justin Verlander. Eric Hosmer will step in. Well, Verlander just as dominant today as he was on Saturday against the Toronto Blue Jays, if you catch my drift. Hosmer is 0 for 1. He flied out his first time up. Seven for 22 now in the big leagues for Hosmer. And he looks at a strike. He's a big boy, too. In the six feet four. We were talking about him when he was taking batting practice today. He looks like he's a whole lot bigger than 6'4. They got him listed at 229 pounds, too. I wonder how big he was in high school. Yeah, but he has not seen a whole lot of Justin Verlanders in his career. That much is for certain. 21 years old. Here he is in the big leagues. Here's the 0 2. Hosmer is also a very accomplished defender as well. They say he's got really soft hands and outstanding defender at first base. He can run too for a big guy. Two and two. In fact, in the minor leagues last year, the uh, the Royals have an award called the Frank White Award, which is given out to their best defensive player in the minors, and Hosmer won it last year. And a breaking ball carved him up on the outer edge. Got him looking. He backdoored him with that breaking ball. But Hosmer gave up on the pitch. And JV has such depth with the pitch and command. Avila held it there long enough for Larry Vanover to get a really good look at it and make the call. Pulling the trigger with the right arm. Ball high to Mike Avilas. One and one. We were talking about earlier about how this KC team can hit, man. I mean, they put up a lot of hits, but Verlander's been in control tonight. And JV's a different kind of animal. Bouncing ball left side. Brandon has it as it flattens out. And Avilas is out of there. Another 1 2 3 inning for Verlander. He's retired 12 in a row now.
Ballpark Tigers on top in this one three to nothing and Justin Verlander again in total command of this one tonight. Brandon Inge will lead it off against Luke Hochaver. And he skies the first pitch shallow right field gets going back. But he'll be called off by Frank Coor. Hey fans be at the ballpark this Tuesday when the Tigers host the Blue Jays at 705 the first 7500 women 15 and older receive a Detroit Tigers breast cancer awareness tote bag for tickets call 866 66 Tiger or log on to Tigers.com pretty cool bag bring that to the beach this summer. Here's Austin Jackson. Homer and a walk for Jackson. It's also stolen a base. The 0 1. Chop foul, third base side. And Jackson got the party started in the very first inning, got himself a fastball at the bottom of the strike zone, and he punished it to left field for a solo shot. And we all know what Jackson did on that road trip in Toronto. He was sizzling hot. One and two on Jackson. Outside, two balls and two strikes. Ground ball to short. Escobar scoops it up. Jackson is out two gone. Ochaver has not had a one two three inning tonight. He is trying to get one here in the fifth. Size more the better. Scott had a base hit back in the first did not score one for two. There's a strike called on the outer edge 0 and 1. Six Tigers hits in this game. Two of them have been home runs. The Jackson and Peralta long balls. Ochaver ahead 0 and 2. Just off the plate, one ball, two strikes on Sizemore. If you're Hochaver coming into the game tonight, you know you have to be stingy. You can't give up too many runs of going up against Verlander, who has outstanding numbers in his career against Kansas City hitters. And the 2 2. Tipped it out of the glove of Trainer. Couldn't hold on to it. Sizemore is still kicking. There's Bosch waiting on deck. Sizemore at the time of his call up. Had scored 17 runs in 23 games. His on base percentage of 445 was the best in the International League. And he got him. Strike three. Hochaver has himself a 1 2 3 inning, his third strikeout of the game. Five in the books. Here comes Verlander.
right, thank you, Mickey. And here we go to the top of the sixth inning. Verlander back to the hill, and he is facing Matt Trainer to start things off. Trainer Escobar, and then Chris Getz. And through the first five innings, Verlander has now thrown 15 pitches above 95 miles an hour. Nine of those came in the first two innings, and so he's kind of heeding the advice of the pitching coach. Pitch right around 92, 93 early. And then you could put your foot on the pedal anytime you get ready to do it because Verlander can get up to triple digits anytime he gets ready to do so. Well, he put his foot on the pedal on that last pitch, 98 to trainer. The 0 2. Trainer is strikeouts back in the third. Verlander has fanned three in this game. He's retired the last 12 straight Royals. KC's only base runner tonight, the Butler walk leading off the second. Swing and a miss. Trainer, no match. Four strikeouts. His stuff is absolutely lethal, and he's got three really good pitches working today. He always brings the fastball with him, but the curveball and the changeup have been exceptional so far through the first five plus innings tonight. 98, there you have it. And he's gone 20 miles per hour below 98. It's really not fair. It just isn't. Escobar bends out of there. Want to know? Jim Leland made an interesting comment the day after Verlander's no hitter on Saturday in Toronto. How he feels that that start may catapult him to the next level. And he said that because he had never seen somebody in the midst of a no hitter as calm as Verlander was. And even his reaction after he threw it was extremely calm. And he's showing that maybe that next level is well right around the corner. He's awfully fun to watch every fifth day. He has gone three and zero oh on the number nine hitter Alcides Escobar. Four. He walked him. Second walk for Justin. Both of the Royals base runners tonight via the base on balls. Here comes Chris Getz. Over two, a line out to center and a bounce out right back to the mound. Got him. Escobar a little bit tardy in getting back, but he got back. Five steals this year for Escobar. He's been caught four times. And the Royals come in with 46 as a team. And they've only been caught nine times. So a good majority of those, Escobar has been the one getting caught. Outside corner 0 and 1 on Getz. Swing and a miss. 0 and 2. Verlander four strikeouts in this game. Justin struck out a total of four in his last start. The three previous starts to that he struck out eight. Runner goes. Ground ball hit towards second base. Sizemore throws him out. Runner advances. With two gone. And Ned Yost putting a runner in motion, and that probably saved them from hitting into a double play. Here's Cabrera, Melky with a couple of ground balls, 0 for 2. Verlander backs him out of there, 1 0.
In the air, right field, hit well. Bosch not going to get it. It'll go all the way to the wall. First hit of the game for the Royals, rounding the bag at second. Cabrera going to third. He's in with a triple. And the run comes to an end for Justin Verlander, and listen to the ovation. Change up that got too much plate, and Melky Cabrera kind of cleared his hips out of the way. And that bat got through this hitting zone in a hurry, and no one could run that one down. 14 and two thirds innings of scoreless or hitless, I should say, baseball and scoreless for that matter. In fact, he had faced 51 batters since allowing a hit to Jorge Posada in the start before the Toronto start. What a run for Verlander. He's dialed it up a notch here against Gordon. First two fastballs at 98 miles an hour. Gordon is 0 for 2. Fly ball and a strikeout. 3 to 1 ball game now. Tigers lead is shaved to 2. Breaking ball is a beauty to Gordon. 1 and 2. Vila able to block it. Two balls, two strikes on Gordon. It was really an amazing stretch for Verlander, who has you thinking no hitter every time he gets the first or second batter out of a ball game. I mean, that's how good he is. The 2 2. Foul straight back. And he had him thinking the same thing here again tonight. Nobody had thrown consecutive no hitters since 1938 when Johnny Vandermeer did it. Same initials as Justin Verlander. How about that? JV to JV. Butler is on deck. And the 2 2. Breaking ball and it got him. Gordon goes down on strikes five for Verlander they finally get to him with an RBI triple in the fans let them know how much they appreciate it. Camp going to take you back to an earlier play in this game. Base hit to right field. Francoeur comes up firing. Cut off by the first baseman. Relayed to Matt Train, the catcher. And he was able to get Jackson by blocking the plate. Jackson's left hand never touched the plate. Coors Light Freeze Cam is always brought to you by your Frost Group Coors Light. And here we go. It's a three to one ball game now as Brendan Bosch leads it off. Three runs, six hits for Detroit. Royals got their first hit. The RBI triple by Melky Cabrera. 
Bosch one out of two followed by Cabrera and then Victor Martinez. Ochaver hits the outside corner for a strike. One and one. Pretty good change up there by Hochaver. Who has all four pitches fastball, curve, slider, and a change. And occasionally he will throw you a split fingered fastball. High towering fly ball. He just missed from hitting at a country mile. Frank Coor hauls it in, one gone. As soon as this one is over, stay with us for Tigers Live with highlights, reaction, and analysis. Tigers Live from the Call Sam Studios. And here at the ballpark immediately after the game on Fox Sports Detroit. Cabrera tonight 0 for 2. Ochaver backs him out of there. Luke has retired five straight since the home run by Johnny Peralta. There's another fly ball. This one in the shallow right field. On the charge, Frank Coor can't quite get there. Frank Coor on a dead sprint. The wind, I don't know if it got a hold of that one. There's a little bit of wind at the ballpark. Flags up there just a bit. He had to play cabby so deep, uh, respecting his power, and that he ran a country mile to try to get there and still needed uh, a few more steps. Here's the 1 1. 2 and 1 on Miguel. Double play ball and a fly out. Here is Hochaver's 2 1. There's another one just about the same spot, only this one will get into the seats. <laughs> 2 2 on Cabrera. He's homered this year against KC, batting 250 against them. Driven hard to center field. That ball is going to get down. It goes all the way to the wall. Cabrera is going to have himself a double. He hit that like a two iron. And there aren't many people that play golf that could hit a two iron. Take a look at where this pitch was and how he was able to get to it and hit it as hard as he did. He's amazing. Brute strength. Tiger said their seventh hit. And with first base open, they want no part of Victor Martinez. Well, he's getting the Cabrera treatment these days. That's what happens when you go seven for your last nine. And Kelly is on deck. Play for the double play ball here with one out and uh, take Martinez's bat out of his hands. Here comes ball three missing outside. Tigers now, especially with Cabrera on their team, just continue to rack up the intentional walks. Martinez will get this one. Go 17 for the Tigers, the most in the American League. KC is next. Butler had five last time I checked. He's leading their team. Second walk for Hochaver. One intention. Here's Kelly. Don had a base hit. Comes back in the second. He's one for two. Tigers trying to rebuild their lead. It's three to one right now. And a bouncing ball slowly towards second base. Gets will charge. Underhand toss. 
Two gone runners advance to second and third. And another hot hitter coming up for Alton. Johnny a solo shot back in the fourth. It was the third run of the game for the Tigers. Fifth home run of the year. Strike one on Peralta. Johnny came in batting 354 against right handed pitching so those numbers against righties just continue to climb. Back him out of there. Two balls, one strike. We knew Johnny had some power when the Tigers acquired him last year. After all, he was the all time leading home run hitter for Cleveland shortstops. But he hit eight in 57 games after being acquired by the Tigers. He has five more this year. Routinely hit 20 or more with Cleveland. 3 1 pitch. Swing and a miss. 3 and 2. Peralta broke into the big leagues in 03 with the Indians. Santiago in the Dominican Republic. Johnny Peralta just 28 years old. 3 2. Inside. He walked in. That's going to load the bases. Third walk for Hochaver. Hochaver was pitching to Peralta like he really didn't want to give him anything to hit. And Peralta saw six pitches in the pitch sequence and did not take his bat off his shoulder. Bob McClure coming out there pitching coach big part of the game uh, Bob McClure wants to make sure that they're clear on just how they're going to pitch to Avila uh, Avila with six home runs and 24 driven in so uh, he's been doing his fair share of damage this year against uh, opposing American League pitchers Coleman warming up in the KC pen in case Hochaver needs some help here in the six they got some good arms in that Kansas City bullpen I'm sure we'll talk about them in the next three days but they're young and they're talented. Larry Vanover is out to break up the party. So Holchaver now, 98 pitches, has gone five and two thirds. He has the bases loaded here. Here is Alex Avila. Avila has an RBI tonight. He's 0 for 2. Chance to bust it open here. Ball one. He didn't go. So Dan Bellino. Uh, Alex uh, in a really good hitter's count right now. Look for the one fastball in the one area and if you get it don't miss it. Two and oh it's an even better count now. Danger time here for Hochaver because he's got him loaded Cabrera is at third. Martinez and Peralta also on the bases. Uh, 
Alex has said that these types of situations right here are the ones that you know, by working out with Cabrera in the offseason has prepared him for nice and relaxed take a deep breath and have confidence in your ability to get the job done. Bouncing ball right side gets makes the play and that is that Tigers leave him loaded no runs a hit three men left to the seventh we go. A lot of people are watching these games, and this is Pat Mayo. He told me a little bit ago he drove 530 miles, and I said, where'd you come from, Baltimore? You're actually from Michigan. Where are you from, and why did you guys decide to come to tonight's game? Uh, I'm from up in the UP. Uh, it's called Berger, Michigan, and it was about 532 miles, but big sports fans. We love the Tigers, and we come down as often as we can, but that distance obviously ain't often enough. What does it mean to you to be here with your family on such a beautiful night and Justin Verlander on the mound? Oh, beautiful. I thought uh, JV was going to get me nervous there going into the sixth inning with no hits, but it's beautiful. I love baseball. All right. Thanks so much. It's so nice to meet you. Rod Amari, we've got fans all over the place, but the UP driving down, that's, that's pretty impressive, I have to say. Very impressive. Thanks, Shannon. Yeah, I mean, with the Tiger fans, well, they're not just a Detroit team. Obviously, they're Michigan's team, and all the way up into the UP. Ever been to the UP, Rod? No, I have not. I know John Hiller lives up there, former Tigers uh, closer, and he talks about it, and he loves it up there. Beautiful country. Billy Butler leading it off here in the seventh. It'll be Butler, Francoeur, and Hosmer. Three runs, seven hits for Detroit, a run on one hit for the Royals. The triple by Melky Cabrera broke up the second consecutive no hit bid of Justin Verlander, who went five and two thirds. No hit baseball in this one. Verlander's throwing some really good fastballs inside to Butler. You can see Butler stepping open with that front foot, trying to clear those hips out of the way because. He anticipated that fastball being inside, but he still couldn't get to it. Verlander's 2-1. And it's 3-1 now. JV's pitch count still in the 80s, so as you might expect, when he was kind of rolling through their lineup the first four or five innings, he wasn't rolling up too many pitches. Now the 3-1. And that's high ball four. It's another walk for Butler who walks for the second time. You want to keep up with the Tigers you can follow them with MLB.com at bat 11 for your app for your iPhone iPad Android or Blackberry get live audio pitch by pitch tracking video highlights and more text at bat to three one eight two six or visit Tigers.com. Third walk of the game for Verlander two of them to Billy Butler. Here's Jeff Francoeur. 
Sometimes you get lost in a no hit bid and, and you kind of look up the scoreboard and you see the Royals are only down by two runs and they are one swing of the bat away here from tying this one up. Waving a miss. So and one on Frank Coor. And Frank Coor's number is not all that good against the Tigers this year, but overall he's hitting close to 300 with some extra base pop. Eight home runs this year for Frank Coor. He's hit safely in his last six in a row. Verlander backs him away 1-1. Texas, the Mets, and Atlanta, the stops for Jeff Rancour. Had himself a really good month of April, hit 314 with five homers. When they signed him, uh, Dayton Moore, the general manager, and Ned Yost, the manager, because they both saw him in Atlanta when he was an outstanding rookie. And they both told him, You're going to get 500, 600 at bats if you stay healthy. And driving 100 runs, you're going to get a chance to do so. And uh, he might just do it. Well, he's off to that type of start. Two and one. Good pitch. Two two. Wicked pitch. It really is. In a 2 1 count, you're looking for a fastball and you don't get it. And you can't do anything with it. If you're Fran Core right now, you don't know what you're going to get from Verlander. He's got four different pitches he can get you out with. Tipped it into the glove. That's strike three. And that's one of them. Six Verlander strikeouts. Look at the depth and the sharpness. On this curveball. Oh, that's a really nice look coming out of the hand. Fox Mo. Here's Eric Hosmer. He hasn't been able to do much against Verlander. 0 for 2, fly ball strikeout. Butler again draws another throw. And Butler not going to steal a base, but every now and then when you have a guy over there that's not a base stealer, at times they will kind of fall asleep, and that's when you can pick them off. And that's what Verlander has tried to do on a couple of occasions with Butler. 99 with that last fastball to the phenom rookie Hosmer, who showed out in New York last week. A couple home runs, drove in four. That's the shallow center. Sizemore will get back there, and Hosmer is 0 for 3. Two gone, and Butler has to hold at first base. Now Mike Avilas. If you're Verlander here and he hasn't made many mistakes today, but you have to force Avila in Aviles, I should say, in hitting the ball to center field or right field. Doesn't have much power in those directions, but he does have some pull power and pulls the ball just about every time he makes contact. He flied out to left and grounded out to short. He's pulled the ball twice in this game. Butler again draws the throw. I called on Avilas. And just about every fastball that Verlander is throwing now is above 95 miles an hour. And that is 15 of them in the last two innings. He's really unbelievable that he gets stronger as the game goes on. 
The wind is really starting to pick up here at the ballpark you now. 33,000 plus in attendance in this one. Verlander had another no hitter going tonight until they got a run and a hit in the sixth. And the 1 1. Off the end of the bat foul, that one bit of Vila. 1 and 2. He found his foot. He got him. Strike three called. Avilas is out of there. Verlander strikes out another. That's seven for the game. JV dominant again tonight. 3 1 Tigers. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Bell Tire. Get the lowest tire price, period, Bell Tire. Back here in downtown Detroit at beautiful Comerica Park, bottom of the seventh inning. Tigers lead the Royals game one in this three game set. Three to one. Verlander outstanding again here tonight. And the Tigers trying to build on their lead. They will have Brandon Inge leading it off, and they will do it against a new pitcher as Lewis Coleman has come on now. And Lewis Coleman was a closer at LSU and closed out the World Series while he was there and now finds himself pitching out of the bullpen for the Kansas City Royals and you can tell he's got a really good arm 12 strikeouts and seven and two thirds innings so far pitched by Coleman opponents batting average under 200 the wall side windows pitching change as Coleman delivers a strike to Brandon in and looks like he can be tough on right handers from that arm slot that he throws from. The 0 1 lifted back out of play. Angel for two. Coleman, 24 years old, swing and a miss. And he takes care of Brandon, one gone. Well, he does look like he could be a load against right handed pitching. Left handers go get him. That's what you tell the lefties on a day like today.
that one struck out a lot of batters in the minor leagues. Jackson stands in there. On the outside corner, strike one. Well, when he starts uh, with the right foot, he's on the third base side of the rubber, pretty much. And he kind of starts with his number as a hitter. You can see it. He uncoils, he turns his back, and then he throws from that arm slot, which can present some problems if you're a righty. Take a good look at the delivery. This is what the hitter's looking at. One and two. 91 is really not all that impressive. It's good, but it's not all that impressive. And, but the deception that comes with the 91 mile per hour fastball looks it like makes it look like it's a little harder than that. Coleman in his days at LSU was the SEC pitcher of the year in 09. That's popped up. Middle of the infield Escobar calling everybody off. Two gone. And yeah, that leaves it up to Scott Sizemore. Tigers have not scored since the Peralta home run in the fourth. Sizemore today one for three. They were able to bend uh, Luke Hochaver who pitched six innings here today. But they weren't really able to break him. Kind of ambushed him early had some traffic on the base paths. But couldn't get that real big hit to expand their lead. And their chance came in the sixth inning when they loaded the bases with two outs, but they left him loaded. Oche returns it over to the bullpen now, hoping his offense can come alive. We'll give Ned Yost some credit for that. After Cabrera double, he simply walked Victor Martinez. And knowing the damage that Martinez has been doing the last 10 days. No part of him. That's popped up as well. The second baseman gets to the grass. And an easy one, two, three inning for Coleman. Here comes Verlander, Tigers baseball presented by Bell Tire. Back here at Comerica Park, our Comerica game summary. Jackson and Peralta each with home runs in this game for the Tigers. They lead it three to one behind Justin Verlander. Seven innings, only one hit allowed. Did not give up a hit until the sixth. So he had another no hit bid going. 96 pitches for Verlander. And he'll go to work now in the eighth inning. And Verlander will face Matt Trainer, who leads it off. 
Trainer Escobar and gets. First pitch in for a strike on one. It's hard to say this, but I can't really remember a game where his curveball has been as good as this curveball collectively. From first pitch up until now, number 98, the curveball has been outstanding. One ball, one strike. Trainer has fanned twice. He hasn't been able to do anything against Justin. That's line to right field, and Bosch can't get it. It's going to roll by him. To the wall it goes. Trainer takes a peek. He'll go to second and round the bag. Now he's going to hold up. He thought about going to third. Eddie Rodriguez said, Get back there. It looked like Brennan kind of got caught in between whether to really leave his feet or to try to keep this ball in front of him. And at the end of the day, uh, didn't stretch out for it as much as he would have liked to. Had he done so, he may have been able to make the play. Just the second hit for the Royals, second double of the year for Trainer. And once again, the Royals now bring the tying run to the plate here. Yeah, but the guys they got coming up, you really don't uh, worry about them hitting the ball at the ballpark. That would be Escobar and Getz. Escobar is over one with a walk. No homers this year for either Escobar or Getz. Wave and a miss, 1 1. Joaquin Benoit is starting to warm up. Bouncing ball, left side of the infield, Inge on the short hop. Tigers fans, it's easier than ever to find the seats you wanted to sell the tickets to the games you can't make on StubHub, the official fan to fan ticket marketplace of the Detroit Tigers. Go to StubHub.com and choose your seats today. And Matt Trainer not able to advance over to third base and with nobody out on the weekly hit ground ball by Escobar to Brandon in. Now gets. Swinging out of the strike zone there at 97. Talked about Getz uh, growing up here locally. He also spent some time you know, working with Dave Bergman at Dave Bergman's Academy. Dave Bergman has worked with a lot of the local kids here at his academy and does really nice work. Bergman heads up the Gross Point Redbirds summer teams that play throughout the course of the year. Getz, a member of that. Organization and played uh, really as a, a youngster growing up. That's going to be rolled to second. Gets us out. Runner to third. Two gone. The so trainer moves up. Two outs though. Here is Melky Cabrera. He was responsible for Kansas City's first hit of this game. It came with two outs in the sixth. As once again the uh, Tigers right hander Verlander had the crowd buzzing at a possible no hitter. Flared in the air toward left. Kelly coming over. Inning over. Verlander gives up a double. But it does not score. We go to the bottom of the eighth.
Well, Justin Verlander was ready to go again tonight. He had a no hitter going into the sixth inning for Melky Cabrera. Was able to get him. And the Tigers hitting now in the bottom of the eighth. They're leading it three to one. Brendan Bosch leads it off. It'll be Bosch. And he rifles one in the air to shallow right center. The wind playing with that one a little bit, and Melky Cabrera makes the basket catch. One gone here in the eighth. He's going to bring up Cabrera. Miguel had a double with one out in the sixth. He got him as far as third base. That was it. Seven Tigers hits tonight, just two for Kansas City. In there for strike one on Miguel. Valverde is starting to warm up. Tomorrow night it's Brad Penny and Jeff Francis. Verlander must be done or he wouldn't be standing up. Just in 105 pitches deep into this one. You've got Valverde, your closer, warming up, and right now it's a two run game. Justin threw 108 in his no hitter last Saturday. Verlander still has a whole lot left in his tank should Jim Leland really want to send him back out there for the ninth. But Valverde has been pretty automatic this year. One ball two strikes. Well it's something I think the managers have to grapple with when you've got a guy like Verlander 105 pitches. He easily could go out in the ninth inning but. You've got Valverde do you try and think long term for later in the season to keep a little bit fresher. Well you also are going up against the middle third of their batting order too. Justin's been able to get through that. A middle third of the batting order but who's to say the fourth time around that they won't get him. They're all capable big league hitters. A yeah, good point because combined Gordon Butler and Frank Coor are 0 for 7. A couple of walks mixed in. I believe he kind of pitched around Butler by design. Don't know for sure. Meanwhile Cabrera goes down swinging. But he could have been and knowing that Butler came in with a 406 career batting average against JV. And a good breaking ball there. Yeah, he says good pitch. You got me. It's going to be it though for Coleman. He will depart the scene. Collins ready to come in. Pitching change for KC and the diminutive left hander comes trotting in in a 3 1 game.
record uh, last year when he was closing games for the Atlanta Braves. Uh, Collins has a fastball that will top out at 95 miles an hour. Every now and then he'll get above that, and his numbers are not bad for a rookie. As a matter of fact, they're pretty good. So Tim Collins, who stands 5'7 to 171 out of Worcester, Mass., only 21 years old. Well, that's the great thing about baseball. Size doesn't matter. It's about heart to play at this level for any length of time. Victor Martinez. Remember Ron Gidry, he wasn't big that uh, big at all either. He was like 5'10, 5'11. Collins got that same kind of Ron Gidry leg kick too. Real high leg kick. Two balls, no strikes on Martinez. Ground ball back up the middle. Escobar, nice play. Spinning and throwing him out with accuracy. What a play by Alcides Escobar. Takes a hit away from Victor Martinez. To the ninth we go. Papa Grande ready to come in. does as well. Jose Valverde is in. Well, he's been perfect this year. Eight games that he has come on to save, and he's been successful in saving all eight of those games. And as we uh, mentioned just a couple of minutes ago, he's going to have to go through the middle of the lineup as you see Casper Wells checking into right field for Brennan Bosch. It'll be Gordon Butler and Frank Coor, three, four, and five in the Royals lineup in a two run game. Alex Gordon, 0 for three tonight, two strikeouts. And a bouncing ball, base hit the other way. It found a hole, and the leadoff man is on. It's going to bring up Billy Butler, who has walked twice in this game. Just the third hit of the night for KC. In case you're wondering, Billy Butler has only grounded into a couple of double plays this year, and that's after 
uh, grounding into about 30 of those bad boys last year. We'll take one here, though. Yes, we will. He needs to start catching up to last year's numbers. 0 and 1 on Billy Butler. Already fifth in the American League with his eight saves. Picked up number 200 Sunday against the Toronto Blue Jays. Strike home, 0 and 2. And Papa Grande is pitching uh, this year so far like he did last year, the first half of the season when he was an all star in his first season in a Tigers uniform. Fastball, mid 90s, and a devastating split fingered pitch. Tombolina. Runner goes. No throw down to second base inside on Butler. That's a gamble, but uh, they realized that Papa Grande was paying no attention uh, whatsoever to Gordon on first base. Therefore, he got himself a great jump and takes the double play out of order. And Gordon has gotten his fourth steal. Swing and a miss, and Butler is disposed of. A big strike out there for Valverde. You don't usually see Butler uh, climb out of the strike zone and chase a 93 mile per hour gas, but that's exactly what he does there against Valverde. First out of the inning. Now Jeff Francoeur. Lightly here, Frank Coor with eight home runs this season. And the eight homers, the team high. The 1 0. That's in the air to right field. Wells coming in. He's under it. Two gone. <laughs> Tigers need one more out. Here comes the crowd now. Paul's ready for another win. And Valverde will face the rookie Hosmer, who tonight is 0 for 3. And it gets away from Avila. That'll go into the camera well. Avila can't find it. So move the runner up. Looks like he hit her off the shin guard. One and zero on Hosmer. Tying run here at the plate. Two outs in the ninth inning. And the one zero. Swing and a miss. He threw it right by him at 96. Tigers pitching with eight strikeouts tonight. Fouled off. 
One and two. One strike separating the Tigers from a six game winning streak. Crowd's fired up. Rolled it foul right off his foot. Hop around. Hosmer staying alive. One ball and two strikes. Justin Verlander had a no hitter going with two outs in the sixth. When Cabrera hit an RBI triple, providing their only run. Another great effort tonight for Verlander. Gordon. Similar to start the inning stole and then moved up in a wild pitch. And the one two. Sling and a miss. He struck him out. And the Tigers have won six in a row. Look out, Papa Brandon. Valverde strikes out two here in the ninth. And the Tigers come back home and pick up right where they left off. They are rolling right now. They are absolutely rolling. Three runs was enough tonight. Jose Valverde put the finishing touches on this one. Tigers win it three to one. Easy Papa Brown.